happen. In your opinion, do you think there are economic sanctions on, in particular, black Africans within racial groups on the ground? The same way you're speaking about the West and Zimbabwe and opposition parties. Do you think on the ground, the average black family, for example, is being disadvantaged by white Indian? And look, this is not to, dis to create discrimination and division. It's just to ask basic questions of, maybe you guys are not aware of why you're poor and jobless and can't start businesses it's because there are groups. They're not the West, they're not America, they're not Europe. There are groups within your own neighborhoods who are manufacturing biases so that you do not, you're not able to farm in a certain town. Mm -hmm. You're not able to set up a certain business. Mm -hmm. In that small little town, mm -hmm. the people that work at the normal bank, normal, they will not even process your application. They lie to you and say you are declined because there are small people in your town who are very well off, who manufacture these things and get you guys to fight each other just where you are kind of situation. Do you think, do you think we have economic like that? Yes, absolutely. On a, well, on a small scale. And, and how, would, how would we be able to identify them and how do we resolve them? I don't want to start at the small scale. I want to start at this big scale and then come through to the small okay. scale. So it starts with people who laugh at the ANC when the ANC says, listen, we are still fighting the legacy of apartheid, and that's why we cannot deliver certain services as well as we can. Oh, Mamlindi was Zulu. And it's people very, say, oh, it's very triggering they, for they're us. They're crazy. They're mad. No, they're not mad. When the apartheid system existed and created the infrastructure that all South Africans brag about, they created it by denying 90% of the South African people any services. So all the money that was supposed to build RDP houses that would have swapped 10 million South Africans living in shacks today was being directed to making sure that white people in South Africa live the highest standard of living in this world among all white people. They were being given roads, they were being given freeways, they were being given the best schools. All that money was being put there, but also they were utilizing Africans as slave labor. So they didn't even have to pay the Africans the money they're supposed to be paid. That's why Umkuluako doesn't have a, a pension. That's why Umkuluako and Ugokuako can't look after themselves. They don't have pensions. They don't have health care, uh, 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 what you call them, uh, packages. What do you call it? Uh, health insurance. Sure. Well, and that's you what they have to, in America. And now it's we'll become, medical aid here. it's become black tax. That black tax is money that the government was supposed to have set aside for your Gogo and Kulu to live comfortably. They were supposed to have built proper houses like they did for white people, but they didn't because mm -hmm. they were busy putting it into making sure that white people have this wonderful infrastructure. That is now, ANC has come in. They came into a country that was already 30 billion US dollars in debt. And they got into this country. It had coffers that were empty and they had to start building RDP houses, schools, roads in townships. I came into certain areas in Soweto that used to have dust roads. Those dust roads are not there anymore. Mm -hmm. But the ANC did not have the benefit of exploiting another group of people, 90% of the population, mm -hmm. not paying them, enslaving them, and then building for black people. Correct. They had to pay salaries, proper salaries. They created a minimum wage and the workers that are now building roads in townships today, that are building the schools today, have to be paid minimum wage. Mm -hmm. They cannot be slaves. They have to have a pension. They have to have a, 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 a sasa at the end of their retirement. And they also have to have EUIF. This is why we like illegal foreigners, because you guys, we can exploit. <laughs> but please continue. And that's an interesting curveball that you've just put in. Especially so, rich white people in this country. They love illegal foreigners because it reminds them of uh, the good old days. So when you had black South Africans that you could exploit without labor laws. But now the problem is that the South African government didn't want to make, the ANC didn't want to make excuses. They just wanted to deliver. But they forgot that they're delivering on a base totally different to the base that the apartheid government had. And while they do trying to build, the apartheid companies that they left to exist, which control 90% of the economy, they sabotage the ANC. Right now they're holding on to 380 billion rand that they're not putting into the economy, that they're not investing, that they used to invest during apartheid because the labor that they were getting and exploiting allowed them to make the highest profits 
in the world. These are and reserves that our biggest companies are just holding. They're holding. They're not investing in the country. And the, those biggest companies are screwing the ANC in the way that the Zimbabwean government was screwed by the, by the British in the aspect that the ANC tacitly accepted not to ask for reparations, not to break these big companies, not to force them to return the property rights that they had from, from apartheid on the basis that you help us grow this new South Africa. Mm. But these companies have screwed and reneged and come back against that deal. But it they sounds like you're protecting invested. the ANC. Because these same ANC guys, this is what we were speaking about, the proxies in Rwanda, DRC. These same ANC guys, these big companies with the reserves, some of those ANC guys sit on the boards. Don't, 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 don't mistake what I'm saying as excusing the ANC. Okay. The ANC has screwed all of us. Okay. Because these companies have destroyed companies in Zimbabwe. Okay. They have destroyed competitors in Zimbabwe because they had this largest from apartheid. They were strong. Yeah. We couldn't compete with them. Cannot. They came in, they killed our guys. Yeah. One. The misinformation about Zimbabwe is mostly driven by companies that belong to NASPAS. South African media. And NASPAS is a big giant that goes into Zimbabwe to propagate anti-Zimbabwean sentiment because the ANC allowed NASPAS to continue to exist with its unjust enrichment from apartheid. We don't like it either. But I also understand the position that ANC is within the compromise and the raw deal that it made on its own. It also thought it can work with white people. They believed in this notion that we can have a multiracial society in which blacks and whites work together. And the ANC was out to prove that to the rest of Africa, that Africa, you failed because you failed to work with whites as one. Watch us they do it, did, boy. Watch us do it, boy. <laughs> and it's only now that the ANC is realizing, oh my God, these guys never loved us. These guys never cared about us. Even now, they even... They're even threatening to sacrifice Cyril Ramaphosa Wakona, take him to court if necessary. If the DA were to come, I wouldn't be surprised they'll take him to court for Palapala. The, the very same whites are now starting to question decisions being made by the public protector about Cyril. They, it's because they never cared about these guys. Fuckers never loved us. That's but, freak. But that's what I love. The ANC is now very sure that they are not loved by these people. They even know that the most loved black man after Mandela, which is Cyril Ramaphosa, by the way, they're also realizing that they never loved Cyril. And probably when we look back, they never loved Mandela. And now they're realizing that. And for me, once a political party and a people get to that realization, they're capable of anything. Because Robert Mugabe came from also thinking, Tabon Begi says it, that we learned reconciliation from Zimbabwe and Robert Mugabe and how he accepted the whites. Then the whites sabotaged them. They assisted the party government in fighting wars against him. Then all of a sudden, Robert Mugabe realized these are not our friends. He turned. We are getting to a point where the ANC is capable of turning. Whether they're going to turn, I don't know. But they are capable of turning because now they realize that this is not my daddy. This is not my, 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 my step uncle. These motherfuckers hate us.